All right, welcome everyone to our next unit, which is going to be talking about area and volume for integration. So our first section, section uh, seven one, is going to be finding the area between curves. So using the integration methods to find the area between curves. So if you remember before, we had defined integration as being the area under a curve to the x-axis. That's what we were finding when we did definite integration. So we're still going to use that concept today, but we're going to find what is the area between two curves versus what is the area between a curve and the axis, with the exception of example number one, which will show the area of a curve and an axis. So um, to start with, there is a nice formula for you at the top that explains how we're going to do this. So as you can see here, we're actually going to take the integration. We are going to, I'm going to write steps down of how we're going to do this. We have to set up our own integral because we have to find out what are the bounds. So what is this x2 and this x1? And then we're going to take whatever is the highest graph. So that's the top graph. And then subtract the bottom graph or the graph that's the lowest, and then integrate them. Okay, so what I'm going to do is attempt to do some notes on this screen. So let's put a little text box in here. And we can put some steps. Take Here we go. Okay. So a text box. So we're going to go with step um, steps here. Okay, so first step, what we have to do. Now, if you have a graph, it's pretty easy to see. So like um, the first step is we need to figure out what are the bounds and where do these two functions intersect? Because that's where we would put your bounds on these, these integrals where x1 and x2 would be, would be where those two graphs intersect. So fortunately, we know right here in this particular one that number one that they intersect at zero and six. But I'm going to show you how you can do that algebraically because sometimes you're not going to have a graph for yourself. And so the first step is going to be to determine the bounds. So determine bounds. And to do this, you would set. So what we have to do is we have to set the equations equal to each other and then set equal to zero and solve for x. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. Even though I know that they show you this on the graph, um, for numbers one and two, I'm gonna show you how to do it algebraically because sometimes I'm going to ask that you prove that you understand how to do it. And sometimes I'm just gonna have you look at a graph. Okay, so for the first step, let's look at number one here. So for number one, uh, step number one, determine the bounds. We're going to set them equal to each other. So x squared minus 6x equals 0. Okay, now this one is nice because it's already equal to 0. So our x squared function is right here. Okay, that's our u. And then our y2 equals 0 is just the axis here. So what we're looking for is we're determining this in here. This area is what we're trying to find. So we already have it equal to zero, beautiful. So now we have to do is solve for x. So in this case, since it's a squared function, hopefully we are recognizing by now that we can't just move things around. We're gonna have to factor this. So this one is a GCF. I can take my x out and I'm left with x minus six. And then I would set each of those equal to zero. So I'm gonna have x equals zero and x minus six equals zero. And so that would end up giving me, if I add the six to the other side, then I would end up having x equals six. So this proves, and this is how you can check where your bounds are, zero and six are where these two graphs intersect. And so we just prove that. Let me make this a better color for you so you can see. So we proved right here, where these blue right here, these are the intersects. So we proved it algebraically, and we can see it on the graph that these are our bounds. Okay, so our second step, step number two, is once we find the bounds, is we're going to set up an integral. 
Okay. So to do that, let me get back to my pen. Okay. To do that, to set up the integral, our bounds are zero to six. Remember you put the biggest number on the top or the one act. Yeah. The six, six on the top and the zero on the bottom. And then according to our formula, the top graph minus the bottom graph. So the top graph is zero, y equals zero. So I'm going to put zero minus, now here's where you have to be careful because you're subtracting the bottom, the whole bottom graph. So it needs to go in parentheses. So minus x squared minus 6x and then dx. Okay, so this is my integral, and this is what I'm going to be determining. Okay, so I'm going to determine the actual value from 6 to 0 for the function 0 minus the function x squared minus 6x. Okay, that is step number two. Okay, step number three would be to simplify. Okay, and what I mean by simplify would be that we don't want these parentheses in here. So we're going to distribute this minus sign in. I'll do this in another color. So distribute the minus sign in. So now it's the integral from 6 to 0. And then we don't really need to write the 0 anymore. So we're going to write negative x squared plus 6x dx. Okay, now from here, once we've done this, actually, we should know how to do the rest of this. We've been doing it for the past two units. So now steps four and five, I'm going to put them all in one step here. Step four is to integrate. And then guess what step five is going to be? After we integrate, we need to evaluate. So integrate the function and then evaluate. So let's go back to this. So integrating this is going to give me negative x to the third over three, remember add one and uh, divide by the new exponent of three plus, and then if I add one here, it's gonna be six x squared divided by two, which is going to give me three x squared really. So I could cross that out and just write three x squared. All right, so that's my integration, that's step number four. And now step number five is to evaluate. Okay, so now I'm going to evaluate this function from 6 to 0. And now if you put in a 0, okay, no matter what happens here, 0 to third power is going to be 0. 0 to, is going to be 0. So we really just need to evaluate it at the 6. Okay, so if we put that in, I'm going to let you go ahead. You can double check my work. But if you plug this in, uh, negative 6 to the third power divided by 3 plus 3 times 6 squared divided by 2 two or sorry just three times six squared you end up with 36. okay so 36 would be the area between these two curves right here that we just found okay i'm going to do one more like this and then um, i'm going to scroll down and you're going to do numbers three and four on your own for homework okay number two let's try number two we'll start with step number one so i'm going to just box this in and keep this here, okay? So step number one, determine the bounds, set the equations equal to each other, and then set equal to zero and solve for x. So if I set them equal to each other, I'll have x squared plus two x plus one equals two x plus five. So let's just take a look at these graphs so you can see. My first one is a parabola, so that's my U shaped here. And my second one is a line. So what we're finding here is the area between these two. So that what I've just colored in there. So that's the piece of information that we want that we'll be looking for in our final answer. So now what we're going to do is solve for x. So we need to get everything over to one side. So I'm going to subtract the 2x. I'm going to do this in one step. Hopefully you can follow. I want to get both of these terms to the other side to make this a 0. So I'll subtract the 2x and subtract the 5 all at one time. So my 2x's cancel, yay, and I have x squared minus 4 equals 0. Okay, and then hopefully you can see that this now is, you can do two things. You could add the 4 and take the square root, or you could factor this as x minus 2x plus 2 
And so our two answers are going to be 2 and negative 2. Okay, so our two answers are 2 and negative 2, which makes sense because if you look here, here's the intersection, x is two, negative 2, and here's another intersection is x is 2. Okay, so we just proved what our bounds are. Okay, so now let's set up the integral. Step number two, set up our integral. We're going from two to negative two. And then the topmost graph goes first. So the line is the one that's highest on um, this bound. Okay, so even though the parabola is going higher, if you look at just the piece of information right here, that is what you're looking for. The topmost of this area is that line. So the line goes first as 2x plus 5. And then the curve, the x squared, goes second. Remember, when you subtract it, you need the parentheses around it as x squared plus 2x plus 1. Okay. And then we will... Okay, step number three is to simplify it. So we're going to add in or just uh, put that negative in. So that's going to be a negative x squared. That's going to change to a negative 2x. And this will change to a negative 1. Okay, so if you'll notice here, our 2x's are going to cancel. So we'll have the integral from 2 to negative 2 of negative x squared plus 4 dx. Okay, it looks pretty similar to how we found the bounds, but yet not because these are opposites. Okay, now um, next step number uh, four is integrate. So when I integrate this, do a different color. When I integrate this, uh, I'm going to add 1, so negative x to the third over 3. And then adding to the 4x will be plus 4x. Okay. And then last step is to evaluate. So I'm going to evaluate from 2 to negative 2. Okay, so if I plug in a 2, negative 2 to the third over 3 is going to be negative 8 over 3 plus 8. And that gives me, so when I do this one, when I plug in a 2, I'm going to get 5 and 1 third, or 5.33 repeating. When I plug in a negative 2, I'm going to get positive 8 over 3 minus 8, which is going to give me a negative 5 and 1 third. Again, I would check my work so you can see that you get the same answers. Now, remember, when we evaluate, we subtract the top from the bottom. So it's going to be 5 and 1 third minus negative 5 and 1 third, which changed to a positive. So when we add them together, it will be 10 and 2 thirds. Okay, so that will be my area from 2 to negative 2. Okay, um, so if you need to pause it, go ahead. I'm going to scroll down. Let me see if I can clear all of this out. And we're going to, perfect, okay. I'm gonna scroll down and um, you're gonna copy down numbers three and four. I do have a worksheet for you when you come back to school, to class. But for right now, just copy down the problem. If you wanna sketch the graph, you're more than welcome to. Um, but let's follow those steps that I just showed you. You're gonna find what the bounds are, even though the bounds are on there, it'll be able to, that way you can check your work. And then you're going to find the area between these curves. Okay, pause it if you need to. All right, I'm going to move on then to the back of this page to five and six. So these are a little bit different, uh, five and six. So I'm going to show you five, and then you'll have number six for homework. So the difference between um, this one and the last one is that we actually have a double, a double bounds or a double integration that we have to follow because the bounds change from on top of the x-axis to on the bottom of the x-axis. So if you look here, we have um, bounds here from 0 to negative 1, where the area is going to end up being positive, right, because it's above the curve. And then we have from 0 to 1, which changes because now we're underneath of the curve. So for this one, it's not that it's anything different. It's just that you have to do two separate integrations and when you set it up. 
So what I am going to do is I'm going to take away step number one for this problem. And when you do number six, I'm going to take away step number one. I'm not going to make you find the, the bounds on these two algebraically. I'm just going to have you just be able to do it because they already give you the bounds. And I'd rather you just understand how to set up the problem itself. So we're going to start by setting up the integral. So we have to set up two different integrals for this. So the first one we're going to do is the integration here from the zero to the negative one. So we're just going to worry about the one I'm highlighting in red. So we have to set up a problem for just that integration. Okay, so I'm moving on to step two. So from zero to one, and also I'm going to write here the area is, I should be writing that. Okay, the area is from zero to negative one. Okay, remember the topmost graph goes first. So the top graph is actually the curve of the x to the third. x to the third is this one that's going like this, like the s curve. Okay, so that is our x to the third. So that one is the topmost graph that goes first. So that's going to go first here. So x to the third minus x. And you are more than welcome to uh, distribute that three in there. I'm going to do it in a second. And then you're going to subtract it from the bottom graph. And the bottom graph is zero. That is our axis. Okay, right there that I just drew um, in the red. I can draw in a different color. Let's draw it in pink. So here is our axis right here in pink. That's our second curve. Okay, so minus zero dx. So that is our first one. Now we have, what we're going to do now is we're going to combine it with the second one. So the second graph here, um, this one that I'm doing in green, this is our second one. So we're going to add it to that integration because that one is from one to zero instead of zero to negative one. So now we're going to find the area from one to zero. Now, which graph is on the top this time? This time, the axis of zero is on the top. So that one has to go first and we'll subtract it from, I'm going to distribute this right now, the three X to the third minus three X dx. Okay. So again, we have to make two separate problems here because you have a flipping of the graph um, and because there, there's two different areas because there's two different shapes that have different bounds. Okay. So it's not just because it goes under the graph. It's also because the bounds switch. So you have actually three different bounds. You have negative one, zero, and one versus just two. Okay. So now we have to solve two different problems and then just add them up at the end. So uh, for the first one, if we distribute, so step number three is to simplify. So I'm going to distribute. So I'm, it's going to be the integral of 3x to the third uh, minus 3x dx. And then plus the integral of negative 3x to the third plus 3x this time, because I'm distributing that minus sign dx. So as you can see, they're basically the same thing. It's just one is negative and one is positive. So next step is let's um, integrate. That's step number four, integrate. So now it's going to be, I'm going to add one. So it'll be 3x to the fourth over four minus 3x squared over two. So I'm going to do one at a time here. Okay, and now I'm evaluating this from zero to negative one. Now, remember, if we plug in a zero into this, we're going to get zero because zero to any power minus zero to any power is going to be zero. If I plug in a negative one here, I'm going to get negative one to the fourth power is still a one. So I'm going to get three fourths minus, and this is still going to be just a positive one here, minus three halves. Okay, which if you work this out, it's going to end up, end up giving you three-fourths, a uh, positive three-fourths. Because uh, remember, you're subtracting these things. That's what we got to be careful of because this will give you a negative. So it's going to be zero minus negative three-fourths, which makes it a positive three-fourths because this was zero. Remember, we have to subtract the two, the top from the bottom. And when you get this one, it's going to be a negative three-fourths. Just be careful because then when you plug it into the formula, it changes it back to a positive. Okay, so over here in this region, we have three-fourths as our answer. 
All right, now let's do the other side. Let's pick a different color here. All right, this time, uh, so it'll be negative 3x to the fourth over 3, and then plus, sorry, over 4, and then plus 3x squared over 2. Okay, now we're going this time from 1 to 0. Okay, so we plug in a 1, you're going to get uh, negative 3 fourths plus three halves, okay, which gives you three fourths. Okay, and then zero will just give you zero. So now we're just gonna add these two together, three fourths plus three fourths, which gives you one and one half or 1.5, because we're up here, we're adding the two areas together. Okay, so now I'm gonna scroll down and you're going to do, clear this out. Okay, you're gonna do number six as your homework. Okay, um, now I will give you a hint that for number, uh, this first one here, uh, you can't just distribute this three, you're gonna have to FOIL this. So X minus one times X minus one times X minus one in order to solve this. So I will give you that much, okay? So they already give you the bounds here. Just copy this down. You're going to try this just like number five. So you have three homework problems for the next class. Let me know if you have any questions and good luck.